morning everybody this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College it's March the 13th and we're looking at Luke and chapter 5 now we have three passages today the first one begins in verse 17 and goes to 26 and it deals with the subject of the healing of the man that was paralyzed let's look let's look at that passage first of all it came to pass on a certain day that as he was teaching there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem now we need to listen to the words of what Luke is actually saying here he said that on this particular day there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by which were come from every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem these were the religious leaders from the whole of Israel that gathered together uh, to hear the Lord Jesus teaching we might ask why well because in the previous passage the Lord Jesus had healed a leper now the healing of a leper was a messianic sign it's something that the religious leaders had agreed that if somebody ever appeared in Israel that could cleanse lepers then he would be a possible candidate for messianic recognition and the Lord Jesus had appeared and somebody had been healed of leprosy this is what made that healing such a remarkable thing and so all of the religious leaders gather and they enter this 10-day investigation to see whether this person that has healed is a significant person or not and the first time that they come they come to listen they're not allowed to speak they're only to listen and then when they've heard what the person has to say they will then go back to the religious leaders to the and to the chiefs of the religious leaders and they will report back as to whether this person is a significant um, person or not and it says the power of the Lord was present to heal them this was the power of the Holy Spirit that was present in the ministry of the Lord Jesus to heal everybody and it says and behold men brought in a bed a man who had been taken with palsy and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him but they could not find by what may by what way they could bring him in because of the multitude then went they up onto the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus and when he saw their faith he said unto him man thy sins are forgiven thee so what the Lord Jesus did was to demonstrate he demonstrated that he was Messiah and the way to do that was to declare the man to be forgiven of his sins now the scribes and Pharisees began to think it says they began to reason who is this that speaks blasphemies who can forgive sins but God alone whether it is easy to say thy sins be so so Jesus perceiving their thoughts notice that he he didn't hear what they said because they didn't say anything he's listening to what they're thinking he answers them and he says why do you reason in your hearts why do you think these things which is it easier to say is it easy to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk now we know that it's much easier to say your sins are forgiven because if he says your sins are forgiven and who's going to contradict that there is nothing to see that would confirm whether that's a reality or not however if he says to the man get up and walk then that will immediately be proved to be false if the man doesn't get up and walk so it's much harder to say to the man get up and walk um, than saying your sins are forgiven so he says but that you may know 
that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Now what had the Lord Jesus done? Well he'd healed a man. He'd healed a man of palsy. The man was paralysed. He couldn't stand up. He couldn't walk. The Lord Jesus had given him his, um, his, his fitness again. But there's something even more remarkable that the Lord Jesus had done. He had in front of all the religious leaders of the whole of Israel, he had demonstrated by a miracle that he was able to forgive sins. That meant that he was making a claim to be Israel's Messiah. That's what he was doing. And after these things, Jesus went forth and he saw a publican. It was, his name was Levi, that's Matthew, sitting at the receipt of customs. So he was a customs officer. And he said unto him, follow me. And Matthew got up and left everything and followed him. You see, Matthew, he recognized the voice of authority. He recognized the voice of invitation. The Lord Jesus was inviting Matthew to become a, a disciple, to become a student, to learn from him and to be with him. He rose up and followed him. Levi then made a great feast in his own house and there was a great company of publicans and others which sat down with him. But there were also scribes and Pharisees, and they murmured against his disciples. They didn't moan to the Lord Jesus face to face. You see, they weren't there to investigate the disciples, and so they could speak to them. They said, Why do you eat with eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered them. He said, Those that are whole do not need a physician. It's those that are sick that need a doctor. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, we need, you know, amongst Christians to think fresh thoughts about what these words mean. There are two designations of all men, whether they're Jews or Gentiles. They are either called the righteous or they're called sinners. Now, a righteous man is one who, in this particular context, he keeps the law. He keeps it faithfully to the very best of his ability. And when he fails to keep the law, he then goes to the temple and he offers a sacrifice for his sins. And that sacrifice puts away his sins. It covers his sins. And he walks away with a clear conscience because he, know, he knows that he's dealt with sin in his life. That's the righteous man. Right through the whole Bible, there are the righteous men and there are the unrighteous. But sinners, now the word sinners is a word in scripture that is reserved for those who are unrighteous. For those who do not keep the law. For those who break the law and often they, through their employment or through their manner of life, they are unable to be um, righteous they're unable to be clean they're unable to enter into the congregation of the lord they're unable to present themselves before the lord these are the sinners he says i have not come to call the righteous but sinners to repentance and so the lord jesus is describing his mission his ministry he came to Israel, we know that. He came to the lost sheep of the house of Israel in particular. He came that he might find those sheep that had gone astray. 
He, he came that he might find those sinners, those that don't keep the law, those that had forsaken the Lord their God, or who were unable to be righteous. He came to seek them that they might find repentance. He, he came that they might turn back to the Lord their God, that they might discover the Lord Jesus as Messiah, and that they might become faithful Jews under the old covenant again. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? And Jesus said, Can the children of the bride chamber flash fast while the bridegroom is with them? You see, while there is a wedding feast, there's not to be any mourning, and there's not to be any fasting because it is a time of celebration and a time of joy. The ministry of the Lord Jesus was to be characterized by joy and by feasting, because the Lord Jesus was with them. The characteristic of those people that were sinners was that they should mourn and they should weep. You see, that's where the Beatitudes comes in. The Lord Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But when they are filled, when they are filled, then there'll be no more mourning and there'll be no more fasting while the Lord Jesus was with them and then the Lord Jesus also goes on to speak to them of the parable of the man who takes he takes his old favorite ephod it's all it's it's old it's worn but it's comfortable he loves it but he finds that there's a there's a tear developing so he decides he will patch it up so he buys a new ephod but he cuts a piece of cloth out of the new ephod and sews it onto the old ephod that he might mend it. The problem is that the new ephod is, is, is um, it's untested and it, it, as soon as the, it, it gets the first shower of rain, immediately he hears a terrible tearing sound and the, the, the old uh, the old ephod is torn by the cloth of the new ephod and uh, he said nobody does this nobody goes out to buy a new coat a new a new garment and uh, takes the new one and me uses it to patch up the old one no one does that he says and nobody puts new wine into old hard brittle wine skins because if they do then as the wine continues to ferment it will burst the wineskins and then both the new wine and the wineskins will both perish. They will both be lost. And the Lord Jesus says something else. He says, and no man having drunk old wine straightway desires the new because he says the old is better. And those who were new, those who were used to old Judaism, those that were used to the teaching of the Mishnah, the teaching of the the Sopharim, they were they were just so enamoured by it. They were so much in love with the old teaching of the rabbis that they didn't want the teaching of Christ. Now, my password for today, my password for today is found in that little verse in verse thirty-two, where Jesus says, "I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners." to repentance. God bless you. Look forward to speaking to you tomorrow. Bye for now.